Well, hello and welcome back. This time we are record we are um going to go through how I quilted this beautiful, beautiful Dresden plate quilt. This was a customer quilt. And my customer asked for a high level of quilting. So then I missed a spot. I did put it back on the long arm and finish that, but um, look at that beauty. It looks complex, um, but I'm going to show you how I broke this down and made it a very simple design to quilt. If you can quilt ribbon candy and echo lines and swirls, um, you can quilt this quilt on a domestic or a long arm. My customer fell in love with this picture on Pinterest and asked if I could quilt this design on their quilt. Um, so I, I, I know I can quilt it if I can draw it. So that's the first thing. I put a piece of acrylic over their quilt and I drew it. And I created my quilt plan at the same time, identifying what things I was going to quilt first, second, third, and fourth, what rulers I was going to use, and off we went. Basically, we're doing the same thing again. We're dividing our spaces, and then we're filling those smaller spaces that we created. In this case, we're going to use the piecing lines of the quilt itself to to help us put those dividing lines in the proper place. So that's good for a number of reasons because you don't have to measure and um, you don't have to mark because you're using the piecing lines within the quilt itself as the markings. So I've got, I'm about to start the next row and again, I go from one side of the quilt to the next. I have an 18 inch throat on my machine, so quite often that determines how much I can quilt. And in this case, I can quilt either the top half or the bottom half of the Dresden plates at a time. I can't do the whole quilt because I don't have enough throat space to be able to do that. But that's okay. So if you have, um, a smaller machine, you can still do this. If you have a domestic, you can still do this. Just on a domestic, rather than um, quilting with the ruler, I would use the ruler to draw the line and then either use a walking foot or the ruler with a quilting foot, a hopping foot, um, to then quilt it. So in this case, I am quilting my first dividing line and this dividing line I am using, see the space there, I'm a quarter inch away from that piecing line. I'm using the piecing in the quilt to guide me, to show me how far I need to go. Now these quilt squares are about 16 inches across, which means the diameter of my circles are going to be more or less 16 inches across. So it just happens I have a 16 inch curved ruler. So that number that if you have some curved rulers, that number on that ruler is most likely um, the diameter of the circle you can draw with that ruler. So this ruler is a number 16. So if I use it to do a complete circle, I will have a 16 inch circle. So I just finished the half circle under the first plate, first plate. plate. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go across, across the whole quilt. And again, I'm gonna stop when I get to the piecing line. Another guide is, see those black pointed um, petals on the on the plate on the Dresden plate where those if you draw a line between those two black points that's that's the 
the quarter mark. So that's where I want to make sure I hit that piecing line. So this is the first dividing line. Dividing line because it divides a bigger space into small spaces. Then I'm going to come back and echo that line. And then I'm going to put in some more dividing lines. The first thing you do on any complex quilt is define and quilt your dividing lines. And you're, you're taking a big, scary space that, you know, on first look, it's like, oh my God, what am I going to put in this big space? You divide it into smaller spaces, and then within those smaller spaces, you pick a design motif, whether it's swirls or ribbon candy or feathers or whatever it is. Um, you then have a smaller space to put that in. Um, Lisa Kelly teaches a great course in her quilting, Heirloom Quilting Academy, wherein she basically defined this process for me. That's where I learned about it and and I think it's it's awesome. It, it's worked on every quilt that I've done since taking that class. Um, step one, create your dividing lines. Turn your big spaces into spot into smaller spaces. Step two, um, quilt or define some um, design motifs within your smaller spaces and then for any space that you have left you can quilt it to death with some really cool fills. So I've got my first and second dividing line the first line and then the echo of that which is what I'm calling my second dividing line. Now I'm, do I'm quilting in my third and fourth dividing lines and You'll see as the head moves, I'm using a bigger ruler. This is, see the number Pro Echo 18? That number 18 means that if I use that ruler to create a complete circle, that circle will have an 18 inch diameter. So I'm quilting this next line an inch further out from the, the previous line. So that inch times two, because it goes the diameter of the circle. Um, the original ruler I used was a 16 inch. I'm now adding an inch on each side of the circle. So now I'm using an 18 inch ruler because my circle went from 16 inches to 18 inches. So again, I'm continuing with quilting my dividing lines. And look at how that space is already a whole lot smaller, more manageable, um, a lot easier to figure out what am I going to do, you know, what am I going to quilt in this big area? Well, that big area just shrunk considerably. This is such a pretty quilt. I love the fabrics. These fabrics remind me a little bit of like 1930s feed sack fabrics. Are you familiar with that? In the 1930s during the Depression, um, feed sacks for animal feed, rather than be plastic, this was the age before plastic, they used to use burlap sacks and then the sack makers discovered that a lot of ladies during the depression were making clothes for themselves and their families from the burlap in these sacks and they thought that you know what if we use some nicer fabric these women will have nicer clothes to nicer fabric to make clothes out of well that's 1930s fabric those small little flower prints that's the 1930s feed sack fabric, and these fabrics in this quilt kind of remind me of, of that, not that I was around in the 30s, I am not that old. <laughs> but anyway, about that same time, in Dresden, Germany, um, plate makers, like, you know, dinner plate makers, were making plates with very elaborate 
pretty floral prints on them. And this was in Dresden, Germany. And somehow that got equated with this quilt design, this quilt block design, and it was, um, that's how it got its name, the Dresden Plate Design. Became popular in the 1920s and 30s and got its name from the dinnerware makers in Dresden, Germany. Pretty cool. All right, so we have our dividing lines done. And look at that big, big scary space is now something much smaller and more manageable. So, so far we've used, oh, I forgot to put the echo line in here. So, so far, you can quilt this quilt if you're comfortable with using a curved ruler. Whether to draw with it if you're on a domestic or quilt with it if you're on a long arm. Um, and look at that. That big empty scary space is now way more manageable. So the next thing we're going to do is, according to that picture on Pinterest, she put um, ribbon candy in that inch wide channel that we created and that looks really nice so we're going to do it here too that was a lovely idea so we're going to go across so ribbon candy from teeny 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 tiny to you can do ribbon candy up to two inches three inches tall um i find it much easier to do it little um and there are some really cool tools if you like it, like in a bigger border. For instance, I've seen it used in a lot of sashings, a lot of borders. Um, just go slow and loop, de loop, de loop. For the longest time, I couldn't get it in my head. Is this a teardrop? You know, I kept envisioning teardrops, especially um, when I was drawing it, and I just couldn't get the loops quite right. So um, what finally did it for me is to envision S curves, S, 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 S. And that kind of did it for me. This is one of those designs, if you're a quilter, um, that you will do well to draw for hours on end. Not all at once, of course, but if you're sitting watching TV or waiting for your kid at whatever function or stuck in traffic in the car, have a little sketch pad or some scrap paper and just doodle ribbon candy. For me, it took a long time to get this to just flow. Now this is four times regular speed, but one day something just popped in my head and I could do ribbon candy nicely, pretty. Um, just consistently, smoothly, nice, equal-sized loops on both ends. Um, and I don't know what happened in my head, but one day it just kind of clicked, and I can now do ribbon candy. But something that will help you is to just draw it over and over and over and over, and just get the image, the correct image in your head, and eventually your hands will do what you see in your head that's really um free motion quilting is very much teaching your body oh there it is you can buy a stencil i put a link in the in the description this is a full a stencil by full line you can use pounce pad that's one inch two inch and three inch ribbon candy take a quilt sandwich just some scrap fabric, scrap batting, and put it on your machine. Swipe the um, pounce pad over it and just practice following that. Because um, those are perfect shapes. And if you can get it in your head and you can get your hands to do what's in your head, that's, that's the battle with free motion quilting. Um, you got to teach your body to do what your head wants it to do. There's another cool tool by Amanda Murphy, um, also a link in your description. Amanda Murphy makes some quilting rulers that will help you make a perfect larger, like the two inch to three inch size ribbon candy. 
um, I own the stencil, of course, <laughs> quilting junkie that I am. And I have used it extensively just for practice pieces um, to learn to teach my body how to do the ribbon candy. I also recently bought the ruler because I can do one inch ribbon candy quite well, but two inch and three inch, um, it's, that's a bigger beast. To, there it is. Good measure by Amanda Murphy. There's you've got three sizes in, oh, four of them. Four sizes of ribbon candy in there. I have not used the rulers. I have unpacked them. <laughs> but I just haven't had a chance to get them out and play with them yet. So if you decide to get these rulers um, and use them, um, leave a note in the comments. Let me know what you think of them. Did they help you improve? Were they easy to get in your head? So anyway, so now for this really complex, oh, there it is, the ruler in use. So you just scooch it along. Anyway, so for this very complicated, um, very intimidating quilt, so far we've used a ruler to do, um, to quilt the curve, and we've done ribbon candy. Um, those are two very basic things, and we've used the lines in the piecing as a guide for placing the curves properly. So, so far, this is a pretty simple quilt to quilt. And look at that, all that open space, we've reduced it significantly into um, less open space that is left to be quilted. And this is pretty much anymore how I attack any quilt, especially when a customer wants a highly complex, stunning, spectacular quilt design, is you just figure out how to break it down into its parts. Again, dividing lines first, design motif second, and if you still have room for fills, put in your fills third. Now what I'm showing you here is marking tools to help me mark the centers of those curved diamonds between the rows of the plates. Um, I tried to do them freehand. I always practice um, eye-catching designs freehand first, not on the quilt, but either at least to draw it, if not off, quilt it on a scrap piece. And I found that without significantly marking where the loops of these squirrels are going to go, that, see, see how those loops of those elongated squirrels have to line up just right, or that block just looks like a wonky, childish mess. So I don't like to mark very much on a quilt, but in this case, um, I just couldn't get away from it. I had to mark it because I just wasn't consistent about, I'm not consistent about um, freehanding those elongated swirls consistently enough to make that look good. And those, those diamonds between the plates, those are eye catchers. You're going to, it's just a focal point on the quilt and they just had to be spot on. They had to be properly placed. Otherwise they just look like crap. So I will mark when I have to. Again, that was the disappearing ink, the air, um, the purple pen, the disappearing ink pen, the air erase pen. And on this quilt, because the placement of those, except for right at the border there, um, was pretty much in an all white area, I gave it a quick light spritz of water and within seconds, all that purple ink was gone. So which if you do that always, I spritzed, I marked and spritzed a piece of the backing, excuse me, which was the same fabric or similar fabric to the top there and it came off beautifully, completely. So I felt comfortable marking the top. That is way more marking than, than I typically do on a quilt, but, um, and if you have a computer, 
of robotics on your machine, IntelliQuilter, Path, Statler, any of those, um, any kind of a robotic system. This center diamond would be an awesome place to combine free motion quilting with um, a computerized design because you can define your points. You have very few points to define. Um, and it's it's a place where it's all open. You know, it's, uh, it's in this case, a solid white fabric. Um, that would be a perfect place to combine free motion with computerized. So these are just elongated swirls that I'm echoing. This part, this triangle here, or all these triangles in the quilt, actually took well, and it just what seemed like for a long time to quilt because of all the, the thread breaks. Um, but I didn't change the design because it just looked so cool and I figured it was worth all the thread breaks to get it done. This will speed up in just a minute. I am using 40 weight polyester thread on this. It has a nice sheen and being white on white, um, I chose white thread because I didn't want to compete. Um, I figured with the full batting in this quilt that would, that would white thread the, the shadow effect. Um, would just make it pop beautifully. I am using Quilter Stream Puff Batting, um, which is a very high loft. I think it's the highest loft batting that Quilter Stream makes. It has like a, a third of an inch loft to it. Um, and as I've said in other videos, I love Quilter Stream Batting. It's one of the few polyester battings that I've found that keep a nice drape and don't become a stiff board when you're done quilting. Um, a lot of quilters find that um, the more heavily you quilt something, the um, stiffer the quilt becomes. And in my opinion, that has much more to do with the batting that you choose for your quilt than the density of your stitches. For instance, um, low quality polyester battings or lower quality polyester battings will make for a very stiff quilt, heavily quilted, um, as will cotton battings. Surprisingly, cotton, I found, um, will become quite stiff if it's heavily quilted. That goes away the more you wash it and use it. Cotton just becomes... Um, more lovely the more you use it and wash it um, but anyway in this quilt i we did choose i recommend it to my customer and we did choose the quilter stream puff batting because it's one of the few battings that is available in white and i and i recommended a very high loft to make the quilting just pop now when there's scribbling inside these centers and I have to turn my light on because I can't see, I can't see to color within the lines um, without my light. So that center stitching is just a very loose scribbling. Um, scribbling being um, just looped, overlapping loopy loops. And it gives, if you do it loose enough, but still overlapping, I think it gives a very beautiful lacy effect especially if you use shiny thread. Um, the thread I used on here is Magnifico by Superior. It's a tri-lobal polyester. Um, Full polyester, which um, has a nice sheen to it. And I really enjoyed that on this quilt. So now that we have, we're moving on to the next step which I didn't show you, but 
In the meantime, I finished my circle. I did, I advanced the quilt and finished the top half of the circle. And so now I am good to go to do the center of this. I'm using a um, circle ruler that matches as closely as possible the um, shape of these petals so I can get a quarter inch offset with my continuous curve. And then I will do a second curve with a smaller circle. And I'm using rulers with this because again, it's one of those bullseye center motifs that's just gonna catch your eye on the finished quilt. So if those were wonky, you would really see it. So I'm taking a little more time using my ruler to get just the right, nice, consistent, centered, smooth curve. Um, rather than just doing it freehand. And keeping with our swirl motif in this quilt, putting a dainty little lacy swirl motif inside the center of this little diamond. So I do that across the four plates of that entire row. This quilt is very puffy because I use Quilter Stream puff batting. That batting has a third of an inch loft to it, which is one of the highest lofts I think you can get on just a single layer of batting. Um, I didn't use wool. I normally would use wool and maybe 80-20 underneath it, but in this case, the polyester is um, has a nice drape and is stable enough on its own and it's white. You can't get wool in white. White is only available in either the polyester or cotton or 80-20. And the cotton in the 80-20 by itself would not have had a high enough loft. So now we're finishing the plates. Again, the first of the four in this row. And I'm just echoing. And, you know, I use my presser foot as a guide to get a quarter inch echo. And that sounds so easy to do, right? Just keep your corner edge of your presser foot along the edge of the previous line. And uh, that's so hard. It's definitely one of the things I need to still work on. Um, they look okay, but they could be better. If you wanna see really amazing um, echo quilting, Check out Adria Good, A-D-R-I-A, -A, Adria Good. She has a YouTube channel. She does some amazing freehand quilting, and a lot of her quilting is includes echoing. She does a lot of swirls, and she does a lot of echoes. And um, she is definitely my role model for improving my own capabilities in that. These echoes aren't too bad could be better. Someday will be better. But for now, they're they're okay. But the cool thing, and if you're a beginning quilter, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. You look at this finished quilt, and even though some of these lines aren't as smooth or as beautifully curved as they could be, you don't see that in the finished quilt. You see the overall effect, and the overall effect, I think, is stunning. And really wouldn't change much if these lines were perfection or a little bit wonky, like I'm doing them here. A year from now, they will be better, I promise you. But for now, this is good. So anyway, my point is, if your free motion quilter, don't beat yourself up over something that doesn't look like it's perfection because you are not a robot, okay? So be okay with, with where you're at and just strive to be better. So we've got the echoing done across all the four plates of this throat space. And now I'm going in and quilting the insides 
or, or onto the prints of the pebbles. Um, pebbles, petals. I don't know what you would call these plate fans. You know, Dresden plate was actually based on the fan design of like Victorian area era crazy quilting. That's kind of where Dresden plate came from. But anyway, I digress. My apologies. Um, we're, um, I quilted all the, the, the four corners, but um, my customer and I agreed that it would look really cool to leave some of the plates unquilted. I mean, of course, they're all ditched. All the, all the plate plates are ditched. Um, and that gives such an amazing puffy effect that we wanted to just keep some of that. So not all the plates are um, thoroughly quilted. Some of the plates are completely quilted. Some of the plates only have the black areas quilted. Um, and some we just left totally, completely puffy. And it looks cool. It just looks so cool. Um, I think variety in a quilt adds a lot to the interest of a quilt. When you look, you know, from, from one area of a quilt to another and you notice just subtle, tiny differences, I think that just adds to the intrigue of a quilt. When you can just stand there for a long period of time and, and just constantly see something different, something cool. But it still fits because it all still ties together. So I'm using invisible thread. I used 40 weight, like I said, the 40 weight polyester, the Magnifico on all the white areas of this quilt, but I used invisible thread on all the print areas and I used invisible thread on my first pass through this quilt where I ditched everything. I ditched all the seam lines in the, in the plates themselves um, and I ditch the borders, and I ditch the, the, the petal pieces that are in the border, and that was, um, that basically stabilized the quilt so that then again, I could travel back and forth, roll back and forth through it, um, and know that um, I wasn't distorting the quilt at all, and there was no chance of the back getting, you know, a pleat in the backing, anything like that. You want to thoroughly stabilize your quilt, especially if you have a small throat space. Um, it just, I think it just makes for better quilting, a better quality overall quilting job. Now again, adding interest to this quilt, I did continuous curve in some of these petals and I went ahead and did a curved X in alternating petals. Um, I get bored easily. It just adds interest. And it's easy to do. I like it. Looks kind of cool, I think. This is such a pretty design. I'm so glad we found that and went with it. Now, one of the things that is not on the video is um, me quilting that black narrow border. I just couldn't get it to show up. I used black thread, I used a 40 weight polyester black thread on the top with white in the bobbin. Yes, that was brave, <laughs> but I got my tension down pretty good, so no, um, no peeking through of one thread or another. But anyway, it just didn't show up, so I didn't include it in the video. But that narrow border basically has an echo on either side, and then these... Um, traveling swirls down the middle. Um, so in these outer petals, I basically repeated the design that I used in the, in the plates themselves, but because these petals are so bigger, it left so much open space that I just, it was too much open space to go with the dense quilting of the rest of the quilt. So I filled in, um, those open spaces with um, what you just saw with some swirls. Um, I love doing these swirls, they're so pretty. 
And you'll see later in the, the fan blades that are continuous curve, I put in some um, ribbon candy. And it looked good. And it matched the density now with the rest of the quilt. And I think that's important. Um, there was my cheat sheet. Um, when you do the, when I did, I don't know about you, but me, I do the top border. And I figure out something nice for the corners. And I, and I just do whatever in that top border, especially if it changes things. And then I get to the bottom border and I stand there and I look at it and I think, uh-oh. I can't remember what I did in the top order. <laughs> so it only takes so many times of having to roll the quilt back up to figure out and remember what you did up there. And then you finally do a cheat sheet before I leave that top border. I will either write some notes or draw a drawing or take a picture with my phone and create a cheat sheet so that when I get to the bottom border, <laughs> I know how I did it and I can match the top border. So, oh, there was the three petals where I did continuous curve and then put the ribbon candy inside it. Again, because there was just too much open space to go with the dense quilting and the rest of the quilt, it needed something to, to fill it. So I did ribbon candy with a little swirl at the very top. The last part of this quilt, I'll show you how to, the next part of the quilt, I'll show you how to do those swirls and wishbones between the plate petals. This was such a fun quilt to quilt. Well, they all are, but it's just Oh, so what haven't I told you yet? Let's see, we talked about, oh, those green rulers. The green rulers I'm using are some of my favorites. They're um, from the Quilted Pineapple. Um, Linda Herka, Her Herka sells um, these rulers in a curved set, and she has a bunch of different sizes of straight rulers. I love these. They have simple markings, which you can see easily on any kind of fabric. They're not, they're a full quarter inch thick and they're green. I think it's because the glass is compressed. I don't know that it's colored, but it's kind of a compressed acrylic. Um, and what's nice about them is they, clear rulers tend to disappear in a quilt and I have actually rolled up a smaller ruler inside the quilt and um, with these green rulers, I'm a lot, lot less likely to do that. So I, I really like those. Um, so Linda Herka of the Quilted Pineapple for those quilting rulers. And again, I'll put a link in the description below. So these are elongated swirls. I learned how to do these by watching Angela Walters' video. Um, she has Angela Walters um, quilting Quilting is my therapy, um, has a wonderful YouTube channel. All her videos are free, and she is an amazing teacher. Um, I've got a link in the description to her swirls class, um, and um, she does an, ama an excellent job teaching how to do these. They're a lot of fun. You can do them as a fill a background fill to fill big spaces or doing them like this. They are a beautiful, beautiful border design. And whether you put wishbones around them like I did, those are kind of my favorites. Um, you can put pebbles around them. You can put straight lines around them or any kind of fill that you like. Um, but my favorites, the wishbones. I like doing wishbones. So in each of these white sections of the border, I just, um, I don't pre-plan it. I just kind of go where, where my hopping foot takes me. So every one of these white sections is a little bit different. Again, I love that about free motion quilting because once you get comfortable with the design, you can just kind of let it flow and it just becomes what it becomes. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I ran out of bobbin right there and had to reload. And off we go. 
Now in longer sections, you can break these wishbones down into, into shorter sections and just stack them on top of each other. Um, with it, which again, look at the overall effect, not each individual loop, but the overall effect, as long as you keep your density, you know, the distance between your stitch lines pretty consistent, this is gonna look good. This is such a cool design. Look how thick that batting is. This is, I don't know if I mentioned it, this is um, Quilter's Dream Puff Batting. It has a one-third inch loft. It is wonderfully stable, has a beautiful drape, um, and unlike other um, polyester battings, it maintains a nice squishy softness no matter how densely you quilt your quilt. Um, a lot of quilters um, stay away from dense stitching like this because they're afraid they're going to end up with a very stiff quilt. And my thoughts on that are it's not the density of the quilting as much as the your choice of batting. Batting, in my opinion, um, has way, way more um, to do with uh, our stiff or nice, squishy, drapey quilt than, than the stitching ever does. Um, Quilter's Dream Battings, I found, um, are just, they're just wonderful. They all have a beautiful drape. But um, this is polyester batting, and this does have a lovely drape even with this much quilting other polyester battings i have found become very very stiff when you quilt them heavily as does in my opinion cotton batting cotton batting gets very stiff also now the thing with cotton batting is the more you use it and the more you wash it the more squishy it becomes again so if you have a stiff quilt with cotton batting wash the heck out of it <laughs> Every time you wash it, it'll get a little softer, a little drapier, a little squishier. Um, not the case with a stiff polyester batting. Um, so just food for thought. The be most beautiful drape battings I have found are bamboo. Bamboo are just, I think, the Cadillac of battings. Um, next up there would be wool. I love wool. Um, and the bamboo, wool, cotton, those all breathe. So if it's for a quilt that you're going to use and sleep under and cuddle under, the breathability of a natural fiber is just, is just, it's just all I would put in a quilt that I'll use. Um, if it's a wall hanging or an art quilt or something you're not going to cuddle up in, who cares if it's stiff, right? So it doesn't much matter there. But if you want a squishy quilt that you're going to cuddle under, um, use a nice squishy batting. And I found all of Quilter Stream's battings. I am not a sales rep for Quilter Stream. I don't get anything for saying that. Um, I stock Quilter Stream. Dream battings, those are the battings that I buy by the roll um, and offer to my customers when they don't forward battings to me. But I have had battings forwarded to me from all different makes and manufacturers. And um, there is a difference. There is a difference in batting. So try them out. See, form your own opinion. So that was it. We finished quilting the quilt. There is the back side, which I love seeing the back sides of quilts. They're just so beautiful. And a close up of the back. Now, even changing the, the quilting, the, the, the amount of quilting in each of those plates, I think even adds such a nice amount of interest to this quilt, and you can really see it on the back. There's the front of the quilt. So beautiful, and look at how intricate. But you've seen how we break it down? 
you do your dividing lines, then you, which creates the smaller spaces, and then little by little you just fill those smaller spaces and you end up with something that looks like this. Isn't that stunning? You can do this. Even, can you control, can you comfortably quilt with rulers? Can you do echoes? Can you do swirls? Can you do ribbon candy? Can you do wishbones? If you can do those four or five things, you can quilt this quilt. So, from here on out, don't let intricately quilts, intricately quilted quilts intimidate you. You just got to break them down into their parts and then quilt one part at a time. So I hope you've and oh, there's the part, there's the little corner that I missed. Check your quilt before you take it off your machine because <laughs> it'll take way more time to put it back on your machine than it would to quilt a little oversight like that. Trust me, I know. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Subscribe to my channel. If you have friends who would be interested in, in my videos, please ask them to watch them, subscribe to them. It all helps. Um, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. I would love your comments. Love, love, love your comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.